Okay, in chapter, chapter 2.8 or section 2.8, we're going to start. Um, they were just asking you to basically get that middle column that we just dealt with. All right, so how do we name some of these ionic compounds? Um, you can take a break for a second. You can pause this and try to do this yourself. I will run through kind of the answers on how we, how do we get these. So let's see. Um, K is what? Potassium. And so again, when you're doing ionic compounds, you're looking for the cation and the anion. So name the cation and then name the anion, and then see if you need to add any Roman numerals uh, in the middle. So I say K is potassium, right? And SO4, 2 minus, is the sulfate ion. So I would just name those two pieces. I don't have to change the ending on the polyatomic ion. It is whatever it is. And the cation keeps the name the same. The only thing now that you want to check is do I need Roman numerals? How do you know when you need to, to put Roman numerals in there? You go back over here. Potassium is a group one metal. It's always plus one. So you don't need any Roman numerals there because there's all, it's only going to be plus one. So remember, um, everything in group one is plus one. Everything in group two is plus two. And then you have silver is plus one, zinc is two, aluminum is three, and everybody else is going to get a Roman numeral. So since potassium is a group one, you don't need to put a Roman numeral in there. Now, why is there a two here? Um, and you don't have to name that. There's a two there because sulfate has a minus two ion. So this is telling me I really have like potassium and potassium and then a sulfate. Right. So then my charges add up. I need that too, but I don't have to call this dipotassium anything. You don't use those prefixes for di um, for um, ionic compounds. You, we'll see that next when we do molecular. All right, and this guy, Ba, is barium. And um, OH is a polyatomic ion. That's hydroxide. And then you're going to go back and say, all right, well, where is barium? It's a group two. Right, it's down here, it's always plus two. Do you need Roman numerals? Nope, you just get barium hydroxide. And you don't have to do anything with this two. Why is there a two there? Because barium has a plus two charge. And you want the whole thing to, to be neutral, so I need one barium and two hydroxides. All right, how about this one? Fe is iron. And Cl, so don't let that three throw you off. A lot of people try to, insert an O there and say, oh, that must be chlorate. No, it's just iron. What are the two ions you have here? You have iron and you have a chloride ion. You just happen to have three of those chloride ions, right? Something like that. Um, I knew I have iron three plus because I have a three down here and the chloride is always minus one. So this is iron. Instead of calling it iron chlorine, it's iron chloride. And then you have to figure out, does he need a Roman numeral? Yep, where's iron? He's right here in the middle. So he definitely needs to add uh, a Roman numeral. He need, He's iron three. Um, NH4, Br. All right, so NH4, that is the only polyatomic cation that we have. That is the ammonium ion. And remember the cation, you never change the name. It's just whatever it is, ammonium. Um, polyatomic ions, we don't change the name. So ammonium and then Br is bromide. Since this is not a metal, we don't need any um, Roman numerals. All right, how about this guy? The two ions that you have here, you have uh, Cr. Cr is chromium. And oxygen becomes oxide. And now you have to figure out what kind of, again, just try to figure out what elements you have here. Which one's the, cation's always gonna come first, anion's gonna be second, and then you just name them that way. So do I need Roman numerals? Where is chromium? Let me pull that up, you can see chromium is one of the transition metals. So you do need to add a Roman numeral there, um, and you uncross your, your multiply there. So you had chromium three plus, and you had O2 minus, right? Oxygen always has a minus two charge, just because of where it's located. Uh, so we have Cr2O3 is really chromium three, so don't put the Roman numeral as the subscript um, uh, attached to it. It's the charge, which is usually the subscript on the, on the other atom that it's combining with. CO and O3, so CO is cobalt. And then NO3 is nitrate. And then you have to look up where's cobalt. Spoiler alert, it's in the middle. There we go, cobalt. And so I need to figure out what the charge is. Um, subscript over there is two. Right, so this came from cobalt 2 plus and NO3 minus. So when I crisscross there, I get 
cobalt to nitrate. Um, you have to also be able to go the other way and make the chemical formulas given the names. So magnesium is magnesium, and then the charge on magnesium is 2 plus. How do you know that? Magnesium is in group 2, it's always a plus 2 charge. And then sulfate is a polyatomic ion. So you have to memorize these polyatomic ions or it's absolutely impossible to name anything. Um, and so you get magnesium sulfate. So when you put that together, you get um, MgSO4. You don't need to do the two and then a parentheses two over here. You're trying to find the, you know, the least number of um, atoms that you have to put together in order to get a neutral um, compound. So because this is plus two and that's minus two, they kind of cancel each other out. Silver sulfide. Silver is one of those special ones, right? So even though it's in, um, the, it's a transition metal, it's one that has a fixed charge. This guy's plus one, plus two, plus three. Remember, one, two, and then one, two, three on that diagonal. So silver has a um, fixed charge, just plus one. Sulfide is not a polyatomic ion. These ides, whenever you see ide, not always, but if it's just, it's an element, that's in its ionic form, right? So now we have an ion. It's sulfide, it just came from sulfur. Where was sulfur? Up here, right? So this is minus one, minus two, minus three. So sulfide has a minus two charge. Um, and so when you put all this together, what do you get? Ag2s, and then lead two, notice the two, the Roman numeral two is telling you that you have Pb2 plus, and then nitrate is minus. Um, again, nitrate's a polyatomic ion. You have to memorize that from the chart. So when you put all these together, you get PbNO3 with a 2. And that is how we name ionic compounds.